When I was in seventh grade, I had a terrific crush on Lisa Maggio. And I chose the moment to ask her to go steady to be our seventh grade dance. I can still smell that high gloss varnish on the gymnasium floor. I was there in my powder blue leisure suit with the contrasting thread on the lapel. I saved my last dance for Lisa. Lisa saved her last dance for Albert Moran. I had the pain of watching that spectacle. When they parted, I walked up to Lisa. I got close to her. My hands were sweating, my chest pounding. I got so close, I put my hands on her shoulders in the middle of the dance floor. And I asked her, Lisa, would you go steady with me? With all her seventh grade charm and sweetness, she said, you are standing on my dress. <laughs> Years later, Albert and Lisa married. Then, sadly, they separated and divorced. I'm an attorney, and I handled that divorce. <laughs> has been paying the price ever since. I have another tender memory from seventh grade. I was in the chorus. We were singing O Tannenbaum, rehearsing for the Christmas concert. Our chorus was led by Dr. Carmen Basha. This PhD from the New England Conservatory of Music achieved the pinnacle of his career leading the seventh grade chorus <laughs> at the Charles DeWolf School in Old Tapan, New Jersey. The man used to flail his arms wildly as if he was conducting the Mormon Tabernacle Choir to achieve the reach that he needed, he had to roll up his shirt sleeves. The man had the hairiest arms I have ever seen. You could shave one arm and crochet an afghan. If you shaved both arms, you could make wall-to-wall -wall carpeting for a two-bedroom apartment. In one rehearsal, he stopped us abruptly this is a very dangerous thing to do to a bunch of seventh graders. I choked on my own Tannenbaum. <laughs> I hear trouble in the altos. I was an alto. He asked for three of us to sing solo, pointed to Cheryl Sisto, another girl, and then me. Cheryl was a short, adorable, cute thing with wiry hair, frizzy hair, and freckles. Even her braces were cute. Ooh, Tannenbaum, ooh, Tannenbaum. Cheryl, your voice is magical. Lisa. Yes, in chorus, I sat next to Lisa Maggio, the love of my seventh grade life. Now a bitter and suffering divorcee. Lisa, your voice is from the heavens. Tony. 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 I have something very special for you. A senior leadership position. You will be page turner for the piano player. The devastation was immediate. On the next field trip, the school bus ride home, I couldn't muster the courage to sing 99 bottles of beer on the wall. <laughs> Even till today, when they play the national anthem at a baseball game, I have to hide in the men's room. <laughs> Why? Why must every religion have so much music in it? Can't I just talk about my devotion to your deity? I can't even sing happy birthday. 
which means during flu season, I don't know when to stop washing my hands. <laughs> my dating trouble only began in seventh grade. More recently, I answered an ad placed in the New York press by one Veronica. She and I talked, and uh, I asked her to meet me on Spring Street, in the middle of the street. I like to meet in a public place, so I feel safe. She got out of her cab. Literally, she drove a cab to the date. I'm on a date with a cabbie, and she speaks English. I can have momentous sex and get a free ride home. Wonderful or at least not pay that night service charge. I mean, could you imagine if we had sex and then she puts me on the meter for the ride home? And what, I have to sit in the back seat too? Her aunt had said, Petite Veronica, you won't be disappointed. We introduced ourselves. Hi, I'm Veronica. Hi, I'm disappointed. How in the world could I know that there is such a thing as a size 18 petite? If this woman is a petite, then I'm this month's cover model for Bulging Muscle magazine. If she's a petite, then I am on the Forbes 400 list. If she's a petite, then the length of my penis is four inches. Thank you all very, very much. A very generous audience. Thank you. Thank you.